Did you know that you can add sound? I mean, probably of course you did. That's what we're doing when we're mixing sound together, or even acoustically when two sounds are happening in the same place. Adding sounds together is as simple as looking at the waveform and going down the line and adding together the two graphs. Sometimes there'll be a point where they're both at a high pressure. In this case, we get an even higher pressure. This is called constructive interference. Similarly, if they're both at a low pressure, we get an even lower pressure. Again, constructive interference. Sometimes, though, one is high and one is low, and the result is something closer to the zero axis. This is called destructive interference. You've probably encountered this idea before as phase cancellation. How does this affect our approach to synthesis? Well, today, I want to talk about additive synthesis. Additive synthesis is a synthesis technique that's based on combining simple waveforms at various frequencies, amplitudes, and phases to create complex waveforms. A simple waveform is a sine wave, a single frequency. And all waveforms can be expressed as the sum of sine waves, as their component frequencies. Any sound you hear can be broken down into individual frequencies, component sine waves. This was a concept demonstrated by the French mathematician Joseph Fourier. So again, sine wave is a simple waveform made up of only one frequency. In contrast, there are also complex waveforms, waveforms comprised of multiple frequencies. We can build these complex waveforms by adding simple waveforms together, and therefore additive synthesis. When we add two waveforms together, we're going to get these patterns of constructive and destructive interference that result in a more complex sound. We call these frequencies that add together to make a sound its spectrum. And we can think of this like a spectrum of light, where white light, when you run it through a prism, you can break it down into all the component colors. Fourier analysis is when we analyze a complex waveform and find out what all of the component sine waves are. When we do this, it's important to understand the significance of the relationship between the frequencies. So let's label a few of these frequency components. First, the lowest frequency of a complex waveform is going to be the fundamental. All other frequencies are partials. Not all partials are created equal, though. The frequency components that are whole number multiples of the fundamental are called harmonics. So, for example, if we have a fundamental of 100 Hz, the first harmonic, 1 times 100, is 100, the fundamental. The second harmonic is going to be 2 times 100 at 200 Hz. The third harmonic is 3 times 100, 300 Hz, and so on. Now, this can seem a little confusing at first. How can multiple frequencies add together to make a sound? I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit here in Reactor. Here, I have a bank of sine waves. They're all set to be different harmonics. And then I have individual amplitude controls of each one. Right now, just the first harmonic, the fundamental, is turned up. Let's hear that. Again, just a sine wave. I'm going to hold that down. And then I'm going to turn up this third harmonic and the sixth harmonic here. You probably hear three pitches there, three tones. Let's try playing some different keys. Do you still hear three tones? Or do you hear those three frequencies now as part of the timbre? Let's add more. Again, sounds like we've added more pitches. But as we start to move them around together at the same ratio, we start to perceive it as timbre instead. Adding more. So now we just hear a timbre that's made up of all of these different sine waves, these frequency components. Let's use Fourier analysis to look at some components of sounds. 
when we look at waveforms, we're looking at a time domain representation of the sound. We're looking at a graph of air pressure over time. Again, time is our x-axis, time domain. To look at the harmonic spectrum of a sound, let's use a frequency domain representation. Frequency domain, frequency is going to be our x-axis. So now we're going to have a graph of amplitude over frequency at a specific moment in time. It's useful to note that we can actually also look at spectra over time using a sonogram. A great example of additive synthesis is Zanakis' Mycenae Alpha from 1978. Using a device called a UPIC, he drew lines on a piece of paper, and then those lines, based on their height, were mapped to different frequencies. You can hear sounds going up and down, but you can also hear the combination of different frequencies make timbres and not just sounds. So, to recap, in additive synthesis, we're combining simple waveforms at different frequencies, amplitudes, and phases to create complex waveforms. We can make any sound by combining simple waveforms, but in order to do so, we're going to need a lot of sine wave oscillators, one for each of the frequency components of the waveform. This might not always be the most efficient way to create a sound. In wavetable synthesis, for example, we can make complex waveforms with just a single oscillator, but wavetable synthesis can only synthesize periodic waveforms based on the wavetables that it has in its memory. Additive synthesis has the potential for more detailed control of sound, the ability to change each frequency component independently, as long as you have the processing power to run a sufficient bank of oscillators. <laughs>